thank you so much for joining me for my Pink Moon Masterpiece painting workshop on this very gloomy Saturday afternoon. As you know, I am providing you with a link for you to use for the next four weeks so that you can, on your own time, go back and either completely redo your masterpiece or tweak or edit. Throughout this video, I am going to go at my pace, so it's not going to be an hour and a half video. So please do pause the video when you need more time, okay? So again, I'm not gonna sit and hang out. Um, we've done that. Um, and oh, sorry, <laughs> if you would like to visit more, I would love to visit with you. I really miss you guys. I do wanna know what you've been up to. Um, let me know and we'll do a FaceTime coffee or something like that. But in the meantime, I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step how to do our Pink Moon Masterpiece. However, this afternoon I am not going to do pink. I am going to use teal. Um, you can use a beautiful coral if you want. You can use um, maybe a really soft peach. A lilac would be beautiful as well. You have a rainbow of colors at your disposal. Primary colors are magenta, blue, and yellow. You only need those three colors plus black or white to create any other color in the whole wide world. So if you have those three colors, you're good to go. If you have a teal and you want it to be more bright, more limey, you're going to add green or yellow to it. If you want to make a lime green, you're just going to take blue and yellow, more yellow than blue, of course. If you want a lilac, you're going to take purple and a little bit of pink or magenta and mix it with white. So always start with your base color and then add your other colors into it. But do enjoy making your colors. This is a pink moon masterpiece, but it does not have to be pink. However, the other colors that you will need are black and white. You will also need a big brush. I am using, sorry, I'm gonna grab, well, I guess I'll start. The other thing you will need is paper towel. You will also need a jar of water. And I am only going to use two sizes of brushes. Mostly I'm going to use my one inch brush. And I'm going to use my half inch brush. Okay. So that's all I'm going to use to do this masterpiece. Um, Right, if you are using acrylic paint, you will always want to wipe the paint off your bristles before you rinse it. You do not want this paint going down your drain. So paper towel is your best friend for this. You're going to wipe off your bristles before you rinse it. You're also going to wipe your bristles, bristles off after you rinse. You don't want to have painty water. You don't want to have watery paint. Paper towel is your best friend for this. So do make sure that you have a stack of paper towel going on as well. So artists, when you're ready and you have your paint out on your beautiful palette, yes, this is my palette, um, we are actually going to start with black. And now what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna go around my moon, but you don't have to. You can actually paint right through your moon if you want to. So, Using my big brush, I am going to get some black on my brush. And I'm gonna go, I mean, last time I did it, I went halfway down, you know, maybe this time I'm only gonna go like a third of the way down-ish. You decide it's your masterpiece. And yes, I know my moon is a little off center. That was me, really, it was just, I. this is my cat's dish that I traced. And I took a ruler and I did a straight line, that was it. So this is your move, this is your horizon line, and we're actually going to paint over our horizon line at some point too. However, you just kind of want to get the back, um, the dark part of your sky uh, filled in. Plus we want to give time for this black to dry. So you're going to take your big brush and you are going to fill this upper part of your canvas in. If your brush starts to make a scratchy sound, it means it needs more paint on the bristles. But again, you wanna spread this paint out. You don't want any gloops or globs. We wanna give time for this black to dry 
gloops and globs make it impossible for paint to dry properly. So do fill in really well, but also spread out your paint. Okay. And once you've done that, we're going to do the exact same thing to the bottom. So if you're not done your top part, you want to hit pause here and then we'll go on to the bottom part. So when you're ready, you're going to do the exact same thing to the bottom part. So we're just gonna get some black on our big brush here. And we are going to fill in. I haven't even rinsed my brush yet because I am using the exact same colors. Right? Black is black is black. You do not have to rinse your brush when you're using the same color. So you just wanna take that straight across about an inch and a half or two inches on the bottom of your canvas. The other thing you can do if you want, and actually, you know what? I'm just gonna paint the entire sides of my canvas black. You can do this now, you can do this later. It's entirely up to you. I do like to paint the sides and the top and the bottom of my canvas because when I hang it, it looks a little bit better because unless you're gonna frame it, you don't really wanna see any white canvas at all, okay? So artists, you can paint the sides of your canvas as well. I just go from the back to the front and do little short strokes, okay? So you could do that if you wanted to. I might as well finish it because you can see it. <laughs> Funny. All right, artists, once you're done filling in the, bl the black, you do want to wipe out your brush really, really well because we're gonna move on to the white, okay? So what I'd like for you to do here is I'd like for you to uh, pause your video if you're not there yet because we do want our black to be dry before we go on to the next step. So our next step is going to be to fill in our middle section. So do hit pause on your, on your video and we'll come back when the black is dry. It shouldn't take too long at all if you've spread out your acrylic paint it shouldn't take long to dry. All right, artists, now that your black is dry, or almost dry, it doesn't have to be 100% dry. That actually takes a couple of days to happen. It just needs to be dry to the touch, okay? So as long as it's dry-ish, we are going to move on to the next step. Oops, oops, got a lot of paint on my brush. <laughs> we're gonna take our big brush and we're gonna dip into our white. So we're going to use white along the middle here. Sorry, just scraping some of that out. And we're actually gonna start at our horizon line. And I've got some teal in my brush. That's okay, because we're actually gonna smudge it in anyway. And I'm gonna start in the middle, just with pure white. I'm gonna go down my horizon line just a little bit. I'm not gonna go all the way to the black. Can if I want to, um, but I can also add that later. Now, if you wanna paint across your moon, you can do that. But if you want, you're just going to add a buffer and it's gonna go around your moon, okay? Oops, sorry, don't go all that way. But what you're gonna do next is you're gonna scrape out some white. You can even totally clean out your brush if you want to, but we're gonna smudge the teal or the pink or the coral or the lilac or whatever color you chose for your moon. We are just going to smudge it in. So I'm gonna get some um, teal here on my dirty brush. It's okay, white and teal can go together. And um, just in the middle here, you're going to smudge them together. Now, I do want you to notice those beautiful streaks. Sorry, you can do a little buffer too if you wanted. I do want you to notice those beautiful streaks. If you love those streaks, just leave them. The more you play with it, the more it's going to turn to one teal. So, if you like those streaks, get a little bit of whatever color you have for your, your pink moon, your lilac moon, your teal moon, your whatever. And we're just going to messily smudge this into our background. It doesn't have to be perfect. Yes, you can go over the horizon line. You're going to take some uh, white and whatever color, but do make it streaky artists, okay? Now, I also want you to go above that black. So fill, fill that in 
And then you're gonna get a little messy up here. You're gonna turn your brush on its side. You're gonna use some thinner strokes. Um, if you start picking up paint, your painting's just gonna turn gray. So just be very uh, cautious of that. If you are you painting over top of wet paint, you always wanna make sure that you have more wet paint on your bristles than is on your canvas. So if your black isn't totally dry, you can paint over top of it as long as one, you're very gentle, and two, you don't have, um, you have more wet paint on your brush than is on your canvas, I should say. So artists, you can see how smudgy and streaky I'm getting. Okay, this doesn't, it, I would just make sure that your lines are horizontal and you can add as much or as little of this as you want. Yes, you can go over top of your moon uh, just a touch, not, not a lot, okay? And you can go into your black sky if you want to. And I'm just being very light with how I'm pressing and going over top of my water is actually down here. Um, you can take this all the way down to the bottom. That may be a, a little much, but you know what? I can always paint over top with black paint. Okay, black goes over top of anything. The only color though that black and white will ever make together is gray. So you do need to be very careful or cautious of white with black. See, I smudged some in there because you're gonna get some gray, whether it's a teal gray, a red gray, a blue gray, a purple gray, whatever it is, but you will get it in there. Okay, artist, so you're gonna play with your background. If you like those streaks, just leave it. Uh, the more you go over top, the more you're going to lose those streaks. So if you like them, just stop. So artists, you're going to continue to play with your background, pause your video here, and um, we're gonna let that dry for a little bit. And when it is dry-ish, we're gonna come back and work on the next step. All right, artists, now that your paint has had a little bit of time to dry, um, maybe it doesn't look this chunky, maybe it looks a little bit smooth, that's totally fine, it's your masterpiece, you decide. So we're gonna move on to the next step. We're going to use our smaller brush, which is my half inch brush. And we are going to find our horizon line again. So let me just grab my brush here. Now what I love about this brush, if I use it on its face, it gives me a wider line. If I use it on its side, it gets a thinner line. And I do want my bristles together, so I am just gonna wet it and reshape my brush. So that's a little bit better. I'm just gonna dip into my black, and if I look back here, I can see my horizon line. So I am just, and you should do this straight on, okay? So I am going to oops, just draw my horizon line back in like that. If it's not perfect, don't worry about it. Land isn't. You can make it as thick or as thin as you want it to be. But this is really just a guiding line because what's gonna happen next is we are going to um, build in our trees. Now, you don't have to do this next step either, but I like the guiding line of the trees, which are the tree trunks. So I'm gonna start right in the middle and my, my middle tree is going to be shorter than the rest. And I'm going to have trees in the background that are further or closer together, pardon me, and the further out I get, the taller they're going to get and the further out they're going to get. This is perspective. And you can add as many or as few trees as you want to. Again, your masterpiece, you decide. And they don't have to be even on either side. Okay, this is just the way that this piece is done, so don't get too caught up in that. And what I'm actually going to do is um, I'm going to switch to my bigger brush after this. Now the next step is to add in the trees. So if you haven't done the tree trunks, you will want to just pause here until you've done that and then come back. But we're gonna move on to the trees. And the way we do that is we want to have a bigger brush and you can kind of break up the bristles a little bit if you want to and you want to hold your brush at about a 45 degree angle, okay? So this isn't straight on, you're not gonna go like this, you're not gonna go like this. You wanna go at about a 45 degree angle. You can hold your brush like this too if it's easier for you. 
and you're gonna get just a little bit of black paint on the tips of your bristles, not a lot. And you're going to actually tap these trees in. Just a lovely little tap, 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 tap. You see what I mean about the tree trunks? You don't need to have the tree trunks in, right? If you're comfortable doing this without the guiding lines, then you can do that. You can make this tree as big or as small as you want it to be. However, do start in the middle and work your way out because that first tree is the one that is furthest away. So you're always gonna paint from the back to the front. I'm gonna do that here with the next tree and you're just gonna tap, 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 tap. When you get to the top here, you may even wanna turn your brush so that you can get a little bit of a point in. Depends on what you want, but you can fill in your tree as much or as little as you want to. I like them filled in quite a bit. I don't really like to see the trunk, to be honest with you. And don't worry if it's not even, Mother Nature isn't. These trees will grow whichever way they want to. So I would always start with just a little bit up the middle and then turn, start to turn my brush as I get to the tip. You're just going to tap and you can always make your branches a little bit wider and don't worry this isn't about it being even like we learned when we were in grade school that's not what this is about this is about the trees growing whichever way the sun tells them to okay so again about a 45 degree angle and you are just going to tap 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 your trees in okay it's really that simple little tap tap so again just loading the tips of my bristles and I'm just tapping my branches in tap tap Don't worry, if you start lifting up your background, just get more paint on your bristles and take it all the way down to your horizon line. Okay, so once you've done that side, you're going to do the exact same thing. Oops, I have too much paint on my brush there. You're gonna do the exact same thing to the right side. tap these branches in. Again, go up the center. Make your branches or your tree taller if you need to or whatever you want to do here. Don't get too caught up on it being perfect. If you do start to lift the background, which I am there, I obviously had too much gobs, just add more paint. So again, you're going to hold your brush at about a 45 degree angle. And you're just going to tap your branches in. And I guess they should go from uh, thinner to thicker towards the bottom. Okay, but don't worry about this being perfect. Okay. tree here. Again, don't worry about it being perfect. Oops. Smudged in some background there. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Okay, but once you're happy with your tree, stop because you will probably do something that you don't like. And no, I have never made an exact same tree the exact same way before so we're going to do that we're going to wipe rinse and wipe our brush out and we're actually going to do a first coat of uh, white paint on our moon
So for those of you who joined me for the live workshop, we did this before we did the trees before. It really doesn't matter. You just wanna have a base coat on your moon. So if you haven't done your trees yet, you're going to want to pause here. And then when we're done our trees, we're going to go to a first white coat on our moon. So I'm going to take my big brush and I'm going to fill it up with white paint. Now you want to cut in the edges of your moon um, just like if you were cutting in the edge of a wall. You want the brush to do the work for you. So to steady my hand, I actually just stick my pinky finger out and hold it onto the canvas. Now I don't want any gloops or globs, just like with before, I want this paint to be spread out so that it will dry. So this is just our base coat. Sorry, artists, I need to move to the right side here. And let the brush do the work for you. It's okay if it's not perfectly round. This is a painting after all, not a photograph. And you want to just fill in your moon with a base coat of white. That's it. Okay, so your brush should be very clean. And you should just be filling in a base coat of white. Do spread out your gloops and globs so that this will dry. Okay. Once you're done that, you're going to wipe, rinse, and wipe your big brush out. Again, you never want to leave acrylic paint on your bristles to dry. So wipe it out because you don't want this paint going down your drain. And you're going to rinse your brush. So artist, pause there if you're not yet ready to move on to the next step. We are going to move on to our reflection. So for the reflections, I am going to use my smaller brush, which is my half inch brush. And this is really fun actually, because all I'm going to do is I'm going to dip into my black, make sure my bristles are together, and I'm gonna make almost like a tornado or um, a scribbling motion. Uh, you just, you just wanna do, this is gonna be messy, okay? It's not going to be perfect. So let's start in the middle. So we'll find our middle tree and we're just going to do little scribbles back and forth until it makes kind of a point, okay? That is going to be our reflection. It's better if you do this straight on so that your lines don't start to curve. Uh, you want this to come straight down because our moon is directly behind. It doesn't matter if it's perfect, right? This is water, it moves. But you do wanna go from the base and just be a little bit scribbly and light with your brush strokes. Okay, and that's it. That's all your reflection is. So I'm using my brush on its side to get thinner lines. Do watch that you are going shorter to longer. If your brush is starting to get too fat, you have too much paint in the bristles, so just either scrape out that page or wipe clean and wipe your brush. And just fill in the last tree there. And I'm also going to add um, some more lines throughout my water. So you can do this if you want to, you don't have to, but they're just thin little uh, reflection lines. And I'm actually just gonna cover up some of my, my bottom, bottom part there. You can hardly see it, okay? So artists, just finish in um, your reflections, and then you wanna add just a, a, if you want, I should say, you don't have to add in those black streaks on your water because if you like your water to be still and you don't want to do this part, then don't. You never have to do what I'm doing. If you like it the way it is, then please just leave it, okay? 
but you want to fill in your reflections and if you're not done that you are going to want to uh, pause here while we let our moon dry all right artists now that your moon has had a little bit of time to dry we're actually going to do a second coat and we're going to add a little bit of moon, moon spots I guess you could see say craters um, so you're going to take your white and again your big brush and we're just going to do our second coat so again let the brush do the work for you if your um, moon is still wet and you're lifting off paint again you always want to have more paint on your brush than is on your canvas more wet paint I should say and you're just going to give your moon a second coat here okay and we're going to fill in the whole thing got some teal in there that's okay guess what we are just gonna smudge it in a little bit or or stipple it in a little bit actually all right artists once you have done your second coat on your moon we're actually going to stipple in some spots so you don't even have to clean your brush for this but what I would like for you to do is rough it up so I just take my palette and I wrap it up a little bit and then I'm just going to dip, um, just get the tiniest amount of teal on the tips of my bristles and I'm actually going to even tap some of that off because it's really, really hard to take, um, to take away. You can always add more. And you're just going to very gently and very lightly tap in spots on your moon. Now I know you're probably working on a larger canvas than I am. Ooh, see what I mean? You don't want too much. That might be uh, it's too much for me anyway. So I'm just going to get some more white on my bristles and just kind of work that in a little bit. Okay. Um, now your your spots. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I'm not super technical when it comes to the moon, but I think there's a, a spot and um, you know some craters here and there. And artists, again, you want to have like not a lot of paint on your bristles, and you want your bristles to be a little roughed up. Okay, and we're just going to very just kind of tap these in tap tap and this time you are going straight on and this is kind of a stippling effect now what I did do in my original masterpiece is I actually took a different color and put it on the top you can do that if you want to you don't have to you can add more spots but if you like your moon just like that then leave it um, I am gonna just add some more teal spots in here last time I did it I added in some purple when we did the live workshop I did some purple artists this is your masterpiece you decide if you want a rainbow moon rock on go for it okay and we're just gonna stipple in some actually I'm just gonna take it all the way around why not okay. artists you can add a, as little of this or as more I mean you can decide how dark your spots are on your moon, right? So I want you to continue, ooh, that's a lot. I want you to continue to play with this until you are happy with it. Um, but I guess that's the trick is once you are happy with it, stop. Because it will be inevitable you will do something that you don't like. So I actually, I think I'm happy with that. So I'm going to leave that. If you are not done, you will want to pause your video here so that you can finish your moon before we go on to adding finishing touches on our water. Um, we are going to move on to our small brush or my half inch brush. So I'm going to wipe, rinse and wipe my brush out. All right, artists, now that you're ready to move on to your water, all I did for the water step is I actually made a lighter shade of teal or tint, I should say, it's not a shade, right, right. So you're just going to mix a little bit of white in with your teal or your pink or your purple or your orange whatever color your moon is and you just want to get it on the tips of your bristles again you don't want to build up paint in your brush and you're just going to add in some waves here um, they don't even have to be like super waves they can just be you definitely want to be horizontal I don't even know if you can see that so you 
definitely want them to be horizontal. And this is only if you are adding anything to your water. If you like your water the way it is, you are not going to do this step. So I'm just taking my smaller brush and I'm adding thin little wave lines. If you wanted, artists, you could even take just pure white and do this as well. You could take white and teal or white and pink on your brush and do it that way as well. But you're just adding some reflections into your water. And so artists, you'll want to work on that. If you're not done that, you're going to want to pause your video here. Now our final step is going to be to add in some stars. So the way we do that is we actually use the hard end of our brush or the handle. And um, you can use whatever size of handle, really it's whatever size of dot you want. And you're going to take your brush and you're going to dip into your white and you are going to dot. Now when you pull away, you want to pull away very gently so that you don't get a big gob that goes down your brush. The faster you are, the faster your paint moves. And you just want to add in as many stars as you want. I would only do two stars max without dipping again. But you want to dip for almost every dot. super easy way to just add some stars in. I think I would add more up towards the top. You know, you can add a couple in the dusk sky. But it's really up to you and how many stars you want to have. So artists, you're gonna add as many stars as you want to, and if you're not done that, you do want to pause the video. But your very, very, very last step, if you want, is to paint the sides and the top and the bottom of your canvas. So if you have already painted your sides, you're okay to flip your canvas and paint the top and the bottom. So whenever you paint on a canvas that is already painted on, you don't want to run your brush up and down. You actually want to pull from the back to the front. So I'm going to take some black and I'm just, oops, sorry, I'm just going to pull from the back to the front and paint the top and the bottom of my canvas. And then that's it, artists. I'm done. So before I let you go, I do just want to take a moment and thank you very much for continuing to paint with Smudge. I know that this is a really different venue than um, what we've done in the past. I do miss your smiling faces. So I do hope that we do get to create with you soon. Until that happens, this will do just fine. I do love painting with you. I love sharing my passion of art with you. And I do love seeing your pieces come to fruition. So please do email me a copy of your uh, photo, I should say, of your masterpiece. You with your masterpiece would be even better because then I get to see you as well. Our email address is info at smudgeart.ca. Before I totally sign off, you will want to make sure that you clean your brushes in warm soapy water and that you reshape the bristles and lay them flat to dry. This will leave your brushes lasting longer because we know that you're going to paint with us very often. Do visit our website at smudgeart.ca and we hope to create with you again very soon. Thank you.